Hi everyone, it's Handy Val. My stereo wasn't working properly and now I have it fully functioning. So in this video I will share my experience with the original Becker stereo sound system my Mercedes and the steps I took to diagnose and ultimately repair it. So when I first bought the car, like we all do, we check if everything is working. I tried the radio, I pressed the power on, the antenna went up, I got sound, yay. Well, not quite. Before I get there, let me give you the lay of the land for these stereo systems. The unit here is the Becker 1432 and it was used in all R129s from 1990 to 1993. But it was also very common in many W140s and W124s like the 300, the 400 SCL, the 500 SEC, and even the E300 to name a few. This part cost 2,000 US dollars in the er in the early 1990s if you want, if yours had broken down and you had to buy one from the dealership. That's great. You heard me correctly. 2,000 US dollars. Now you know why it came with a radio code. It's what's called a head unit. It has no amplifiers. Amplifiers are elsewhere. I'll get to those soon enough. This car has six speakers, three on each side. It has a high frequency located here, which is very easy to remove and replace. And behind the door panel, you've got the mid-range and you have the base. I'll show a quick clip on how they look behind the door panel with the door panel removed. I have a video on how to remove the door panel on my Handy Val channel if interested. Okay, so here was my problem. I had sound coming from the high frequency speaker and I had sound coming from the mid-range. And I only occasionally had sound coming from the bass speaker. The bass would come and go on its free will. And that's both speakers, both the passenger and the driver's side, which is very annoying. So I'll explain how I fixed it. Naturally, I thought there was likely a problem with the connection with the head unit. So I'll show you how to take this out. My panel removal kit that I, I think everyone should, should own comes actually with a couple of removal keys. And I'll show you how you use these. I and mean, I think these are pretty universal. Now, if you notice, there's a couple of slots for them. And you kind of slide them in. Both. There's a little bit, little bit of a hook there. Put them all the way in, and then you just pull out. Pretty simple. I know there's other folks you try like, you know, kind of credit cards or other pieces of plastic, but it's very important if you are going to work a lot on your car, you have one of these kits. They come with a lot of these extra accessories that that are actually quite helpful. So this is what I did. I took the whole thing out. I checked the connections back here. Which let's have a look. Can you see the connections back there? And they were uh, they were pretty solid. They weren't going anywhere. They actually had a fuse there. Okay, everything worked properly. Everything was as it should be. So I knew that wasn't the problem. It's always a good place to always start with those connectors. In this case, I cleared that up. Next, I thought it could be the bass speakers. They are a pain to remove as you need to get the whole door panel out before you can get to the speakers. Now, I had to remove the door panel anyway to get to my door check. So I took the speakers out and actually had them tested by a local electronics repair fellow. He said they worked fine. And I'll show a clip of how they look as standalone speakers. And so here I'm kind of showing you them uh, without the cover. You know, so the cover kind of uh, goes around it. I've kind of removed the cover, and you can sort of see the uh, the woofer here. Um, it is a, uh, a foam surround, and then the uh, the mid range actually, interesting enough, actually has a 
uh, rubber surround. So that led me to the amplifiers. And this car has two. One in the trunk. So here's the CD changer. And there's actually, you had to get, so the main amplifier is actually behind this carpeting area. And there's a few clips to get to it. So the R129s had the main amplifier back there. The base amplifier for the 1990 to 1993 for all SLs is located in the front wheel well from the passenger side. If I wasn't getting any sound from any of the speakers, then the main amplifier could have been the culprit. But I had sound everywhere except the big speakers. So naturally it made sense that the bass amplifier was the problem. So first things first, you want to get rid of any carpeting you have here. Alright, so to remove the carpeting, if you actually look underneath it, there's actually a little bit of a... I mean, Mercedes do make it easy <laughs> for you. And then there's... And then there's a cover, and it's held together by a couple of plastic clips, okay? Now, depending on how strong they are, you could use uh, needle nose pliers to kind of yank them out. Uh, you know, they come out pretty easily. I don't know. And Okay, and then this kind of contraption uh, just kind of just kind of comes out and it gives you a few warning signs uh, specifically around you know the airbag and the seat belt tensioner it tells you just to be very careful with what you're touching back there we're not touching anything except for and you could see it now that's the base amplifier so that's the base amplifier that's controlling the signal to the base speaker okay and it's actually held together by one Phillips screw, okay, a little bit of a hook over there. It's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Remove uh, this. There's a connector over here quite easily. Uh, once, you know, once you've take that screw out, the whole thing kind of comes out and, and then remove the connection. Okay, so what I'm holding here is the original base amplifier. And it's, uh, you're going to have to use one of those micro screwdriver sets. And it's got four here and two there. So it's got six screws. You don't need to remove uh, these two. And the whole thing kind of just, you got to kind of yank at it, uh, and then it'll just kind of comes up. So at this point, you know, I'm, I've got this, this is again, the original one, and I'm looking for faults. And again, it's, it's in amazing condition in terms of looks. Uh, and now when I'm looking at this, I'm trying to find you know, anything that could be out of the ordinary, right? And, you know, I notice maybe a few things, maybe a little bit of corrosion, but not crazy, not crazy. And if you actually look um, in there, you'll start to see there's a little bit of corrosion. Okay? And I thought, hey, that's not too bad, I go, but... You know, there's, there's a lot of sprays you could use to try to remove some of that corrosion, try to get connections back. And the other thing as well is behind this cover here is the relay. Now, I couldn't get this thing out, and I was afraid I was going to break the whole thing. And it's not something that easily comes out. I think, you know, this could have been repaired at some point. I don't know. Uh, but I think it's being held together. There's some kind of glue that's behind there. I think if you have... Uh, one that's maybe never been opened, and, and again, I don't know if this has been opened. I think if you kind of pull on it, it does come out. So naturally, at this point, I thought, okay, I know my culprit is. It's probably a poor connection somewhere. And I used my trusty CRC electronic cleaner. Now, I kind of had this, kind of connected it. Um, you know, I sprayed liberally into these sort of like these, what I call maybe bad solder joints. Uh, I sprayed a little bit along the back over here. I let it dry, and I put it back in the car. And for three months, going back to last year, it worked wonderfully. Until I was pulling the car away for storage around December of last year, and I tried the radio, and it was back up to its old self again. Bass was coming and going. And at this point now, I tried it again. Uh, with the uh, CRC electronic cleaner, I tried cleaning the joints, 
shoulder joints a bit. I sprayed a bit back here, but nothing I could do at this point was going to revive it. My base, there's something clearly wrong with this mechanism here. So I had a few options. Remove the base amplifier and live with a stereo without bass. At least by me removing the bass amplifier, I wouldn't hear the intermittent bass coming and going. It'll be a little slightly more enjoyable. But that's not enjoyable. You can't listen to the stereo without bass. My second option was to continue to fiddle with the solder joints or try prying the relay cover and seeing if it had a bad connector that needed some gentle sanding. Or third option was search eBay for a gently used and working bass amplifier. So I decided to go on to go to the used route. I found one on eBay and the buyer did say that it was working. So I went down that route, I bought it, I installed it, and it's been working great ever since. And that's the one you see there that's already in the car. That's the one I had purchased on eBay. A few other quirks to share with you. Some of you may be thinking, Handy Val, if you had the door panel removed, why did you just replace the speakers with more modern ones? You know, it's really, first of all, it's really hard to find aftermarket bass speakers for two reasons for these cars. You know, the bass is a slim speaker that fits in the door panel. And it's a one ohm speaker. That's right, one ohm speaker is not very common at all. Now, the mid range is a four ohm, uh, which I believe, which not that I believe, I know you could find a replacement for that. And the thing also to note is that if you want to keep the Becker, 1432, then you need to ensure that all the replacement speakers have the same ohms as the original. Otherwise, it just won't work properly. And if you want to replace this set, um, you know, there are some ones that you could actually buy some aftermarket stereos that actually, uh, you know, maybe that with the connections in the back that would fit, maybe it's also Bluetooth, would work with these speakers. But again, there's very few there. You don't have a lot of choice unless what you want to do is buy yourself a completely uh, new kind of head unit and then maybe even bypass all the amplifiers um, and then reconnect it with some new speakers. That's a possibility as well. Again, but the speakers are awfully slim, the ones that you need to buy that get put into the doors. So let me know of your experiences with your Becker stereo in the comments section. I hope this video helped inform you. If you enjoyed this video and learned from it, please like the video and consider subscribing to my Handy Val channel as I will be posting more Mercedes videos in the near future. You can also check my Handy Val channel for more videos that I have already created. Thanks for watching. Handy Val. Bye for now.